Hello ladies and gentlemen, Pork Chopper here, and today we have a somewhat different video than normal. Usually I do hero in depth guides, but I feel for Chimera there was more 5 tips I wanted to share with him as he is quite a simple hero to play. These tips should help you understand his role more and how to be really dominant not just in the early game but also mid to late game too. First up is be aggressive. Chimera isn't about waiting till the late game, he is a very strong early game and if you can get ahead you can pretty much steamroll the other team. Chimera can farm very easily because of his health regen passive, this means camps will clear quickly while you're still being at full health. You should even without being level 5 always put the enemy under pressure over and over again. I see too many Chimera players being passive for the first 15 minutes and they don't get the advantage they need for the late game. Now once you have your ultimate at level 5 you come in even bigger threat, locking down heroes and doing big damage very quickly. In any team fight or skirmish you have to be there and keep on attacking and pressing forward even if the fight seems lost. The example I have here is midway through a game and I have a decent lead with a few successful ganks early on. Wraith ults us to go invisible after our phase goes into trouble when she overextended, then we attack. I use my ult while being blinded but we do secure a good amount of kills, but why stop there? Even with low health I push on and keep going leading my team on. With phase ultimate I make quick work of the Quan and Howie. He is the type of hero that if you are in a team fight you need to be right there with them. You're not the best at defending or pushing lanes, you are a pure predator type of hero in fights. Chimera has no escape and remember that in those fights the likelihood of you getting away is very slim, so deal as much damage as possible and be the biggest pain you can be. If your team gets wiped and you are still in the fight, delaying the enemy team or securing a kill or two can make sure they can't capitalise on your loss. The second tip is Chimera's ultimate. Most players will use it just to lock down on a hero to finish them off and not use it any other time. This is not the best way to use it. Remember the ultimate gives a stun to the hero and knock back any other heroes near you. Use that to your advantage. I mostly use Chimera's ultimate as a locking down tool to help my team secure that kill. Chimera can get ahead of the team with his leap easily and using the ultimate to stun the enemy while your team catches up is very important. I have two examples here to show this. One is on the sparrow where I had to cut it just fine enough to jump on her. Then I ult straight away hoping my sparrow and phase can catch up in time for the kill which we got. If I didn't ult straight away the sparrow would have got to safety and we wouldn't have secured the kill. Same here with this overextended Quan, which my sparrow and phase again want to go in to kill. I go in early to hunt him down and I know I need to ult right now so we can lock down the Quan from moving and get the kill. If I waited to use my ult for the last hit he would have escaped and again gone under the tower from safety. Hope this example show that the Chimera does have a good amount of CC with his ultimate and the possibilities with it can be great for your team to again secure the kills rather than just finish them off. Chimera is like every hero and has his weaknesses and number 3 is to more help you understand the heroes you are good against and not. He's strongest against those low mobility heroes that can't escape from him if caught out of position and that's the whole point of Chimera, he can punish an enemy better than anyone for overextending. And if that overextended player has no escape, well they might as well stop playing and grab a jink while waiting for themselves to respawn. Heroes like this are Sparrow, Moragas, Revenant, Faye, Bellica, just to name a few which can be the most successful against. That's not all though, some heroes may have escapes but you counter really well like against a Wukong. Wukongs can be very annoying if they keep splish pushing right and how mobile he is but you can just keep locking him down over and over scaring him away rather easily even sometimes getting killed. You can see that here going into this tower to finish him off. The heroes you aren't good against is well a heavy CC team, ones that can stun you and make you a very irrelevant in team fights. Ones which also have proper escapes too like Gideon early on can be a pain as it's almost impossible to gank him successfully unless he's already used his torn space. The fourth and probably most important one is don't use your leap unless you need to. If you can sneak up to an enemy you can save your leap and let them use any sort of escape they have. This means once they have used their escape you can pants on them right away. If you use your leap for no reason and then they try to escape you have to wait roughly around 3 seconds before leaping on them again which is a lot of damage potential missed. This is the usual issue you will have with a Gideon, Ray, Shinbi just to name a few but it's always worth saving your leap if you can. 
A great example I have here is against this Morgus. I know if she has a ward here she would know I was coming, so I wait and I think about locking on but what's the point? I walk right up to her and attack away. The second she uses her speed boost, that's when I pounce on her and unuse my ult to secure the kill. If I used my leap right away, I wouldn't have had it when she tried to escape and probably would have got under the tower to safety. This shows the difference there of being efficient and think before attacking even with a hero like Chimera. Now the last one is a bit more of an appearance, but I always believed in most times making a tanky Chimera than a damaged focused build. With his health regen, adding a load of armor on while still adding a bit of damage feels great on him. Most times if not always currently, junglers have to take that frontline role, and Chimera can get easily into the act and even though he isn't a proper initiator, I believe to build him tanky enough to jump in and start the fights focusing on the weaker backline heroes like the carry, support or caster, whichever you can get your hands on, that has low mobility and then go for them. You can see that multiple times here. I flank around and straight away go for the sparrow because she is the carry and doesn't have any escapes and as you can see it's an easy kill. The next is similar, we have to defend an inhib from Prime. The Morgus has split pushing and again no mobility, so I jump on her and the team bursts her down with good rotations. Then we rotate back to mid lane and the fight has broken out and I already know my focus and it's the sparrow, whilst I jump on and she has no chance. You can note also during that team fight I took a lot of damage there and I feel mid to late game Chimera is a better zoner and controller hero than a damage one. Zone heroes down or poking the backline to distract them is how he stays relevant in the late game. But that about does it, covering 5 very important tips you may not think all that much about with Chimera, but if you use them well you can have more success with ganking effectively. Learn the best heroes to attack and focus, know when to pick Chimera in the draft lobby, and how certain builds make it more viable late game. So if you enjoyed the video, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.